On January 11, 2024, in the Yellow Sea, this odd-looking new Chinese solid-fueled rocket stationed on a launch ship ignited its four solid-fueled boosters, generating 600 tons of thrust and eventually putting three Earth observation satellites into a sun-synchronous orbit. This rocket is the Gravity-1, the most powerful solid-fueled rocket to date, with a payload capacity of 6.5 tons to low-Earth orbit. More importantly, this rocket illustrates a new trend in China's launch sector, which is massively launching rockets from the sea. It all started in early June 2019. Off the coast of the province of Shandong, a barge was modified to host the Long March 11, a small solid field rocket developed by China's state-owned conglomerate, CASC. This rocket, which was initially designed to launch from land, was adapted to be ejected by cold gas from a launch tube on the barge. And on June the 5th, 2019, this capability was successfully demonstrated with the Long March 11 igniting in midair and sending seven small satellites into low Earth orbit. Now, this wasn't just some one-time technology verification test. This happened again in 2020, again in 2022, and again in 2023. And soon, it wasn't just the Long March 11. Others were joining the race with the Jelong 3 from the company China Rocket in December of 2022, the Series 1 from Galactic Energy in September of 2023, and now the Gravity 1 from Orion Space. With these new players, China's sea launch capabilities now cover a wide range of payload capacities, going from several hundreds of kilograms to 6.5 tons. And this capacity could grow even further with the current development of additional more powerful solid field engines by China's state-owned solid field engine manufacturer, AASPT. The Chinese apparently also want to go beyond just solid field rockets. While all the rockets mentioned previously were solid field, Several Chinese commercial companies like Space Pioneer or Galactic Energy have suggested that their liquid-filled rockets would also be adapted for sea launch. And so why is there this gold rush to launch from the sea, and why does this trend seem exclusively Chinese? For some context, launching from the sea is not exactly new. There was another company that attempted this in the 2000s called Sea Launch. This was a four-country Russian, Ukrainian, American, and Norwegian endeavor with the idea of having a mobile sea platform that would be able to sail from the coast of Long Beach to the equator, and then basically benefit from a massive boost from the Earth's rotation for the launch of satellites into geostationary orbit. But in the end, this didn't work out. The expensive logistics and the associated engineering of having to launch from the sea made the company too costly to operate. And similarly, in China, launching satellites into geostationary orbit from the sea is not the market that many of these sea launch Chinese companies are going for. If you look at their sea launch capable rockets, none of them have the payload capacity for modern geostationary satellites, and none of them have really marketed this capability. Additionally, China already has the Wenchang and Xichang launch centers, which are situated at relatively low latitudes and already cover the launches of geostationary satellites. Now, beyond geostationary satellites, launching from the sea does offer some benefits also for low Earth orbit and medium Earth orbit satellites. The launch location can be tailored to the orbital parameters of the satellite, and so typically a launch vessel can sail to high latitude locations for launch into polar orbits or to low latitude locations for satellites launched into low inclination orbits. And this flexibility is one of the reasons put forward by Chinese launch companies which are developing sea launch capabilities. But there's also a second, quite China-specific reason explaining why China is doing sea launch. And for this, let's look at a map. China's three busiest launch sites are Zhouquan, Taiyuan, and Xichang, and they are all situated inland. This means that when a rocket launches, the first stages and boosters generally fall back on land. To avoid rocket parts falling on densely populated areas, these three launch sites are very limited in the azimuth in which the rockets can launch. And even with these measures, temporary evacuation zones must be set up for each launch to avoid any casualties in rural areas. And so launching from the sea avoids all this hassle, all these restrictions and problems, meaning that launch companies can launch satellites into any orbital plane, thanks to the remoteness of launching from basically the middle of the ocean. 
And finally, one of the other reasons for the emergence of sea launch in China is just the fact that China's existing launch sites are currently very busy. The number of Chinese launches has been growing year after year, and newly founded commercial companies are finding it more and more difficult to launch from these more traditional military-controlled launch sites where national space program missions unsurprisingly receive priority. So you combine all these factors, this is why China decided to establish in 2019 a sea-based spaceport in the coastal city of Haiyang dedicated to commercial launches, and from which all Chinese sea launch missions have taken place so far. The local government in Shandong has been pouring massive amounts of funding into the spaceport and has been encouraging launch companies to establish manufacturing and assembly activities locally. This support also included investing in a dedicated mobile sea launch platform, which began construction in 2021 and was used for the first time, I believe, for the Gravity One in 2024. Just so you realize, we're talking about a massive 162 meter long ship, which is, at least in theory, able to support solid and liquid fuel launch vehicles in the future. So what should we expect from China and sea launch in the coming years? Clearly, the objective of China's Haiyang spaceport, several of China's launch companies, as well as the local government there, is to industrialize sea launch and to go beyond the current one to three annual sea launches today. And based on the figures that several Chinese sea launch capable rocket companies have announced, I speculate that there's a chance that China reaches two digit annual sea launch figures in the coming two years. The long term viability of all this is questionable, though, in my opinion, as the high cost problem encountered by the Russian American company Sea Launch probably applies as well to the Chinese. And I think there's a good chance that some of this sea launch craze taking place currently in China is funded by investor money, considering the extremely low prices some of these launches were sold at, with some of them in the range of a reusable SpaceX Falcon 9. But with the strong government support for sea launch infrastructure and the push for new launch sites in China, I think that Chinese sea launch is here to stay, although perhaps with a fewer number of players than today. And finally, this is the first video of 2024, so a late Happy New Year to all of my viewers. And as always, a special thank you to my Patreon supporters on Patreon.com and YouTube memberships who enable our independent coverage of the Chinese space sector. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.